So, new, you know, there are several people that are in the process of moving. I'm just going to speak to that for just a minute. Like, we are in this time of what was working has is not going to work anymore. I don't keep, I, really, it's pretty much universal, right? What got us here is not going to get us there. And if you have this urge to move, by all means, follow the urge and and look into it. You may end up staying right where you are. But what's important is that we begin to explore why we're feeling certain ways. It could be that you don't literally need to move your, your living place, but you need to move jobs or you need to move um, out of situations that used to work, but no longer work for you. It's really what this 2021 has been about. 2020 was about stop. Everything's going, you know, like we were all forced to make changes, to look at life differently. We had to live in something that we were never expected to live in, right? 2021 for many people has been much harder than 2020. Now I am not minimizing the struggle of jobs or loss of a loved one. But the moving forward in life in 2021 has really been difficult for a lot of my clients. Uh, people, people have a hard time with change. And in 2020, we were forced to change, right? But in 2021, we have this desire to take action and yet we can feel stuck. Like no matter what we do, we can have that big fear of change because we don't want to take action. And when we have a fear of change, there's so many reasons why that can happen, right? We don't want to fail. We don't want to say we did it wrong. We don't want to make a mistake. We don't want bad things to happen to us. There is so many things that contribute to the fear of change. I could literally write a book around the fear of change. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, enough of my chit chat. It's just been what's really been in, in my awareness for quite a bit, yeah. Yeah, hi Donna, you will, thank you. All right, I'm gonna switch hats now and I am going to go into answering questions. There are, are Many people that sent me emails that live in, you know, crazy time zones in the world, as well as that work during this time, and they're going to listen to the replay. So I want to, I want to get started so I can answer as many questions as possible. So I'm going to pretty much read as they came in, okay? There are some that were extremely long. I'm going to paraphrase those, all right? And, um, and then I'll speak to it. So, Urvashi, you are first. You were the very first one. I'm just going in order of how they came in, nothing else. Anyway, you turned your soon first. Now this is, this is how, this is her question. She realizes that something isn't working in her life. So this is what happened. She says, today I saw a luxurious car. We all have, right? And my thought was why I'm not in that driver's seat. Been there too, okay? I don't own that car. I am a hard worker, okay, still. I could not afford that. You are a hard worker, by the way. Why am I not heavily paid for my work and I don't have success? I want financial freedom. Mm -hmm. I want it too. I want financial freedom. Urvashi, the key is to do something that you love. I could say I have to work. I do. I contribute to the, to the family financial, okay? I do, but because I love what I do, I don't live in that, in that 
where I have to work. Financial freedom, I want to encourage you to let go of the words financial freedom. They're marketing words. There is only 1% of the US population that are billionaires. And yet somehow, all of us, right, in some way, that is some standard. When I was a little girl, it was a millionaire, right? In Los Angeles, it'll take a million dollars to buy a house now. So, Urvashi, you have an inherited pattern of low self-worth that is contributing to this situation as well as you might truly want to look at your current job. There's a lot of reasons why we stay working in, situ in jobs that, that don't make us feel good, including retirement. There's a lot of reasons. Insurance. I want you to ask yourself these questions. Am I getting paid for as hard as I work? Uh, just ask yourself. No, you're not. Ask yourself that. Do I like what I'm doing during the day for my work? I didn't say love. Now, I love what I do. It took me a lot of, a lot of time to do what I like before it got me to something I loved. And I worked hard. I didn't hate it. So I want you to use the word like on purpose. It's intentional. If you are not getting paid enough, have you, when was the last time you asked for a raise? Was it in the last year? In America, it's pretty hard to ask for a raise if you've already had one, you know, for within the past year. I know you live in India. It's going to be kind of a different, you're, you're set by a different rule of thumb, okay? All right. If you answered no to enjoying your work, it's time to start looking. It's time to start looking for different options, my dear. Okay. Take your time. Start looking for options because when we take action, Abashi, then the universe can respond with opportunities. But when we're so stuck in what we don't have, right, then we're unable to see the opportunity and we aren't able to take action to find one. Love you. All right. This is from Leslie. What's blocking me from financial abundance and why am I blocked from doing work that I love instead of doing stressful work I don't like? Mm -hmm. where I am not respected as an administrative assistant. I have so much more to give and be. Oh, my Leslie, dear. Do you ever have more than you could give than, than you're currently getting paid or being respected? You have more than you are currently giving. Please do not give more in this situation. You have an inherited pattern of struggle. On the flip side, you have an inherited gift, okay, of helping others. But, okay, you're just getting it. You're, you're earning your worth with the wrong people. Problem is, okay, you are working for men that do not respect you. Now, not all men do not respect women. These men are so self-absorbed that you work for that they aren't going to respect anybody, in that position. You could have, it. they could have in there an amazing male assistant and he's not gonna feel valued. It's who they are, it is not you. You will never receive the acknowledgement you truly deserve if you continue working for these, these people. Now you have a pattern of, of being in struggle in jobs, okay? So I'm gonna make some suggestions. You are so valuable, okay, to others. You deserve to work for someone who truly appreciates and is happy to pay you for your gifts and talents, okay? So please find a new job. I don't care how long you've been there. 
think about working as a virtual assistant. You might have to take an online course, okay, to get a little tech savvy if you're not, or look for jobs either way for working for a spiritual business owner. This will get into you into more alignment. Uh, it'll help you be on that aligned path of who you are, right? And then that will lead to something else. I had many jobs, okay, that were along the way. And I didn't change jobs often. So, okay, just, just stick with it. They get out of the job, okay? Work for someone who um, is, is aligned, right, with you. Do some interviews. When you go to the interview, have questions for them. Questions about things you need, right? So if you get a, if you start, if they want to start you at a pay that is less than what you're making, ask them, is there an, at what point, you know, you could say, could we have a three month trial time and then I make what I'm making now or I make, you know, add some dollars to it, right? Be creative because you are super creative and you're not going to be creative with these two people. Okay. I hope that helps. Love you. All right, Jenny Lynn, you say, I want to break free, break free from the childhood belief that I am no one Deser and I deserve, I don't deserve to, to be anybody. I'm a waste and will never change. It's a lot of burden, sweetheart, okay? Begin paying attention to your thoughts. It's a lot of negative chatter in that brain of yours, okay? So this is what I want you to do. I want you to begin first to retrain your brain. I give my clients this. When you have a negative thought, I want you to say, cancel, cancel, only love is spoken here. Cancel, cancel, only love is spoken here. Cancel, cancel is a mental um, pattern disruptor. Only love is spoken here will train the conscious brain, the subconscious brain to know, oh, wait a minute, the thought that I had, the conscious brain is going, is going to call you out and you can't, and cancel, cancel is only love is spoken here, meaning pay attention to your thoughts. The subconscious needs to be taught what is a positive and what is a negative thought. It doesn't know, dear. It has the belief that what it's thinking is true. It's not, okay? I promise. Depending on your finances, Jenny Lynn, I have several certified healers that I could refer you to, all right? And they could really help the other aspects of this. Begin with cancel, cancel, only love is spoken here. You may say it 200 times during the day. It can become, it can become so automatic if you do it. Your subconscious will begin to protect you like I want it to. And you'll begin to say it without even thinking about it. I have to share a quick story. I do, I do this, by the way. It wasn't all that long ago. And all of a sudden, I'm saying that to myself. I'm like, what is that about? Okay. I pause. And you know what I had been thinking before that was about how this guy I used to date was so disrespectful. Right? Now, my brain said, oh, no, you don't. We're not going back to those icky feelings. Oh, no, no, no. Right? Cancel, cancel. Only love is spoken here because we have lots of stories that we can pull up to prove why we have a belief that we do. Help yourself. Now, I'll come back in here. I will put a link to my, I'll just put a link to my calendar, but anybody can go onto my website, click on contact. Now it's gonna open up where you see something and then something else, you know, about, 
getting help. You can fill out a form. Don't fill out the form because I can't respond to an email with the form. It takes me a lot of time. I have to like copy, put it in. Don't, don't fill out the form. Just click on book now and it will take you to a calendar that you can actually book some private time to talk to me and then I can make some suggestions, okay? With different people with all different ranges, all right? And, and it's important that I refer you, okay? So, because I wanna make sure I get the right one for you, but all of them are good and they're all trained in my method, all right? Those are a couple things. Hope that helps because I know that you are worthy of more. Okay. All right. Jacqueline. Jacqueline, I'm not going to read all this, dearest. Okay. But the bottom line, you know, towards what's going on is she's been in a relationship where she agreed to um, freedom. Freedom of expression with other people within the relationship. And it worked and, and for a while, and now it isn't working. And even though she's done a lot of work, Jacqueline, I know you've done a lot of work around this. And I know that you're struggling, love. And I just want you to know that I hear you. I understand. All right. You've been in this relationship 10 years, okay? And you're, a, you're an amazing partner, dearest. You haven't done anything wrong. Now, and I also am aware that he's not hearing you. And you know, when you kind of say maybe it's jealousy, yeah, it, who cares if it's jealousy? Who cares if you're jealous is what I say to that, all right? Now, I want to, I want, and then you ask me, can I help you? Okay. Here we go, love. First, let me speak quickly to the situation that you live in. Okay. I understand that you value freedom and you want to honor your partner's need. Okay. To have a relationship with other women. I do. When something that started in our life out being okay, and then it doesn't work anymore, it is human nature that we begin to wrong ourselves. We then wrong them, right? I know. Okay. And it's, we begin to wrong ourselves because it used to be okay. So we do the work and we start, you know, saying, hey, wait a minute, this is my problem to yourself. And uh, I know that you've done that. And then we go, oh, wait a minute, it's them. And we say, this is how I'm feeling because we want to speak up. Right. Okay. When it gets to that point, whether we're aware of it or not, there is something going on in that subconscious, right? That we want our partner to prove their love to us, that we are the, are, are the one they will choose. Yeah. And that's where you are right now. You are not feeling chosen doesn't mean he doesn't treat you well. He spends time with you. Okay. Now, this is going to be hard to hear. On some level, you already know it. He is not going to change. Yes. To your other question, can I help you? I can personally help you release inherited patterns of jealousy Insecurity, the ones you're feeling and those things, even those, those feelings of being hurt in your lifetime, okay? I can even help you release feelings of not being completely chosen, okay? And what that would do is that will allow you space to have more clarity on how to move forward. 
that I can promise you. Either way, what you are in right now, Jacqueline, is self-discovery. And no amount of hiding behind work or on the flip side, no amount of vacations with your partner, your man, is going to change this situation. Now, I'm sending you lots of love, dear one. You have a lot of amazing gifts and talents. And what used to work, if it doesn't anymore, Right? If it doesn't anymore, what do you want to do to feel better? It's about you. Love you. Jackie. I'm, she says, I'm taking my power back after five years. Any words? And I'm volu volunteering my time during the week. I need self-confidence. Jackie, hold on a minute. No, I drop my glasses and I do my, my glasses periodically. So Jackie, to increase confidence, it's important to make decisions that move you forward in life. Way to go, you did that in making the decision to take your power back. My question, who did you give your power away to before? I'm very, there's a reason I'm asking. Who did you give your power away before? Okay, now I'm going to guess, and if it isn't, then this will be applicable to someone, but I think it's, it's pretty spot on, okay? If it was a relationship with a partner, if that is the case, anyone you spend time with, anyone, I don't care if it's a friend or somebody saying, let's go on a date, like old fashioned way, right? To get to know somebody. Anybody you spend time with at all that reminds you at all of this individual in your life, I want you to stop hanging out with them. Okay, now that sounds harsh, I know. It can even sound like, hey, wait a minute, Lisa. That's kind of judgmental because my friend isn't always like that. Well, they weren't either to begin with. And it really doesn't matter if they are always a certain way or sometimes certain a way. This is part of changing vibrational energy to attract people that do honor you. So your body is used to a certain type of individual. There's a belief system going on that that's all you can get, whether you're aware of it or not. So I want you to avoid spending time with anyone who looks like them, who reminds you of them, who smiles like them, who says hi like them, right? Who eats like them, who burps like them, I don't care what it is, <laughs> right? Anybody. If it's a best friend, I want you to minimize time. Minimize is the operative word there, okay? There's no just being rude to people here, okay? Now, it's very strategic, okay? When you begin to do this, your energy field and body will begin to recognize who you can trust and who you shouldn't. Then the next thing that will happen is you will start to attract people who honor your time, honor their word with you, okay? Will listen to you and emotion, are emotionally available because this individual was not, okay? Now, if, if you choose to do it differently and make excuses for people you hang out with, okay? So for example, let's say you go out on a, uh, you go to dinner with somebody for the first time. You go, hmm, they're better looking than this previous guy. 
they definitely have a more secure job. They don't have as many issues, at least I don't think yet, but they've got this, this, I don't know, right? There's something else. I, it doesn't matter if it's a feeling. This is the deal. If you start to make excuses as to why somebody is better than the person before, but it's still, you've got this insecurity around it, please just don't, please, please don't keep going out because something, something is not better than nothing, which I know you're going to understand, okay? And I also know that there are people in this world that would truly value spending time with you. Way to go, taking action and beginning to own your self-worth because you are worthy of something better. Mm, love you. All right. Stephanie, I know I have to watch my time. I really can go on forever. I'm doing fine. Okay, moving through. Stephanie, what are the tools and resources one would use to reclaim one's power from being bullied? How does one take one's personal power back against forces that are relentless, okay? To go with my life, my family, and my business to thrive and not survive. Please help. By the way, she says, I will no longer hide or run. Love you, Lisa. I love you too, Stephanie, okay? Not hiding. First of all, you're already heading in the right direction because not hiding, okay, from a bully that doesn't mean, I, I, we're saying the same thing here, Stephanie, but not hiding is the first step. Sticking up for yourself is the next step. And I have something I want you to begin to repeat to yourself, Stephanie, especially if you begin to feel those ESP th you know, feelings, the, the intuitive side to you, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm being followed or I'm being tapped or I'm being, right? Okay. I want you to say this and start repeating this, this to yourself. This is your new mantra. I am confident. I am safe. Okay. I'll go slower. I am confident. I am safe to be seen. I am divinely protected now and in the future. I'll say it one more time. I am confident. I am safe to be seen. I am divinely protected now and in the future. You've got this, all right? Love you. All right, Mike, sovereignty. You've got sovereignty, Mike. You've got it dialed in. Down to a science for yourself, Mike. Way to go. Okay, I actually love that. For you, Mike, I would suggest staying flexible. Now, I'm not saying agreeing to anything. I'm saying flexibility and not becoming too fixed or set in your ways. Now, I understand sovereignty very well. And I applaud you for owning sovereignty. Also, though, I want you to keep your energy flexible, so to speak. Okay? So you will always be a receiver of opportunities. When we become too set in our ways, what happens is the subconscious blocks vision of opportunities because it wants to protect us. You're very smart and you will be able to take this and let it percolate, okay? Keep doing what you're doing because I want you to remain sovereign and I also want you to develop this skill of trust, all right, and to be around people that totally get you, which you have, okay? 
You've got people in your life that really understand you. You, you're just, you're, you're a protector. You're a warrior, right? Just pay attention to not, not being able to see perimeters. Okay. I just want you to be able to see them. I want you to be aware of them. I want you to see opportunities. Okay. Lauren. She says, hi, I want to decide whether letting go and being free, happier, or defending myself and standing up for what is truly mine and healing my image, energy from being from the victimization. I feel like it's a catch-22, she says. All right. Lauren, the inherited patterns can be cleared without disowning, you know, your family, your heritage. Now, it can at some point, from a different perspective, when you're in a different place, okay, it can include that if you want to separate yourself 100%, <coughs> right? But you healing, you, dear one, is the priority. But you healing will automatically, all right, help others heal. It's what I call a tender mercy from the universe, okay? When something is inherited from my client, it is automatically, hold on, I need water. <coughs> Want to know something? On Wednesdays, I start talking on, on camera at 7 a.m. I think I need to divide, divide it up a little bit, right? Okay. <coughs> or I need to gargle with salt water just before I get on. Okay. Here we go. Thank you. When something is inherited, the universal tender mercy from the universe, okay, from source, is when it's released from one, it will release from all. Now, if you have children, it doesn't mean all your children inherited the same thing, by the way. When it releases from you, it will release from your mother or your father, whoever it came through. No blame, by the way, to either one of them. We don't, this doesn't happen to us consciously. Nobody chooses to pass this on, okay? It's just the way it is. So that will release. So in other words, I have literally seen children shift and change just by working through a mother or a father, by releasing the inherited pattern or the inherited habit, right, within one will help the, help the children, okay? So much so that a daughter that was 21 years old decided to be the designated driver on New Year's Eve, who previously was drinking too much, was controlling her life. And, and all we did was worked through the mother. I never directly would worked on this girl. That would be so out of integrity for me. So you can change and affect things just through you, love. But what's important is it will give you back your soul that you feel like you've lost. That's what's important. So before you denounce, okay, your inheritance, your inheritance, so to speak. Um, it's very decisive to do that. Now, when we are in abusive situation, that's a different conversation. You did not give me that information. I said it exactly like you wrote it, dearest. So it doesn't have to be a catch-22, okay? You can start in one place, begin healing you here, okay? 
allow yourself to feel more confident. It will give you a sense of vision in a way into how to move forward. Because what I do know is you staying in this icky feeling that you live in isn't working for you. And it hasn't for a very long time. Okay, great question. Love you, Lauren. All right, Pamela, years of stress, not knowing until I was 65 that I was an empath. I would say that most people your age do not know if they're an empath. Don't be hard on yourself for that, okay? And the fact that you do, oh, right? Great, great information to know that. Now, you could work with a really good energy healer on your adrenals, okay? In addition, you can... Um, you can take vitamin support for adrenals, right? Now, I'm going to give you another tool, a little thing that I have done, okay? And I teach this, okay? So I'm going to teach it to you. Impas, when we've picked up other people's energy, it's pretty much always negative, okay? Because an empath at heart wants to help other people. That's why they make great healers. I'm, I'm a super big empath. And I spent half my life living in fear. Because nobody told me. I didn't understand who I was. I was afraid of being who I am. So first is you have to embrace it. Your adrenals will heal. I'm not concerned about your adrenals. Half the people in, in the world are walking around with adrenal failure and they don't even know it. Your adrenals will heal. Now, this is what I want you to start doing. When you don't feel good, when you can be doing great and then all of a sudden your energy taints, don't blame it on your adrenals, okay? I want you to say this. I want you to stop and say to yourself, okay, Pamela, is this feeling mine or someone else's? Nine times out of 10, you're gonna get someone else's, okay? It's not yours. Tell your body to let it go. Now, something that I do because the brain likes, the brain likes to know you did something. It's just the way it is, okay? So I literally pretend that I'm walking through a screen this magical screen that will totally get rid of all my energy, all the energy of someone else's that isn't mine. And so I'll just say that, okay, it's not mine. I'm going to allow it to be released. I walk through this, close my eyes. I walk through this imaginary screen. I know it's not real, but I promise you, you're going to feel better. Okay. We could say energy healing isn't real. Yet I have thousands of people that would tell us differently. Okay? So, is it mine or someone else's will change your life if you then tell your body to let it go and do something about it? Okay? And I promise you, your adrenals will heal. Okay? Okay. Uh, so proud of you for, I mean, proud of you for wanting to know how you can get better. Mwah. Love you. Anna Pirna, you're telling me I want to, I want to focus to be me and to live my, my purpose um, joyfully every day to the fullest. I am always in, to always be in control of my thoughts, feelings, and consciously creating and living my life. Can I become an energy healer? All right, let's speak to this. Let me speak to this. You have done so much, Anna Pirna. Can we just, I just want to acknowledge that. We're, everybody, everybody, if we could take ourselves and be on camera, everybody would hold up their hands and, and literally an acknowledgement, like way to go. 
You've done so much. Now, you're on this spiritual awakening right now. And when we begin to step on this new level of awareness of who we are, and how we haven't been living with what feels good. And now we're feeling, you know, like really empowered. What begins to happen in a Purna is we can't move fast enough. And no matter how we do it, it's not fast enough. And you're in this, it's not fast enough. I'm not doing it fast enough. Whew. Acknowledge yourself for the work that you've done. This is the beginning of so much more for you. So. Yes, you would make a great healer. I even have a certification program that you could do at some point. For now, though, I want you to find a new job. Okay, take action and stop working with people you, who do not value you. Even if they value you, but you don't love the work, Okay, you don't have to find the perfect work. Okay, you, you really don't, but you do need to change the situation, right? It's like saying to the universe, okay, I hear you, I'm taking action. I, you're, you're looking, continue to look, or I, I think you're looking, continue to look, okay? If you want to move, move. You can always move back to where you are. Do anything that acknowledges that you're making change. I didn't say act ap haphazardly. Acknowledging that you're safe to make changes in your life. And I would love to teach you how to heal at some point. Okay? Mm. Love you, Annapurna. All right. Molly, dear. I'm tired of worrying about my health. Yeah. I'm doing what I can and not letting worry ramp space in my life. Mm -hmm. There are others, Molly, on here who have challenges very similar to yours. Okay. Who either have been going to doctors in the process of it, in treatment, right? And you say, what do I really want? Well, okay. I, she goes, I, and you say, I want to pay pay it forward. I want to pay forward all the love and encouragement I have received for the amazing coaches, friends, and family in my life. Okay. And you say, my focus is to move back to California to be supported around like-minded people. Californians are great, right? Like, welcome back. And focus your attention on being a coach and a healer. Dearest, you are doing everything you possibly can. Way to go. I literally, nothing comes to my mind that you need to do differently. Your body will heal. All right. Just do. You're taking action. You're doing what you're doing. You are going to love being a healer and combining the healing that you're learning from me with coaching. You are going to be so good at it. I also want to tell you, you already give love the way others love you. That's why people love you. It's because you are that already. That will not be a problem. What might be a problem as a healer is charging others. That's, a, that's something I can help you with, okay? Because it is our divine right, everybody, whether we play sports, whether we're, we're an attorney, no matter what we do in our life, yes, we can give service to others. I do that plenty. And we can get paid for what we're good at. And so can you. Love you. And I love having you with me. All right. Robin. Robin, you are the first one on the on the call tonight. Hi, love. All right. 
You say, I really need healing from trauma and guilt and for my heart to shake off the walls, right, that you've built around it. Actually, there really is something called the heart wall. There can be organ walls that really, I don't know if you're aware of that, but that really is true, okay? And you say, I just keep feeling as if I am no longer connected to source or anything, really. I know, love. It's like you have this, this um, you've lost, it's been, it's, it needs to be rekindled, your zest for life, your enthusiasm, your belief in yourself, right? Your, your um, even the energy, you lack the energy, love, to take steps forward anymore. Anymore is the operative word because you've already tried, okay? Now, somewhere in your life, Robin, whether you're aware of it or not, trapped, trapped this belief. Now, there's un, un, there is an inherited low self-worth, by the way. But I'm honed in on something else right now, okay? It trapped this belief that you are not worthy of love from source. That somehow you do not measure up. Do you know, there are actually some people believe that source punishes them. As hard as that might be to hear for that person that's struggling, source doesn't punish like that. Nor does source, source deny giving love. But we can and believe that we're the victim, okay, of being denied and not be aware of it, all right? Because the, the truth is, right, it, it, it's, not, it's not true, is the truth. It's not true that you're not worthy to be, to be loved, to be connected, to be appreciated, to be seen by you having a universal connection. You know this cognitively. I doubt I'm saying anything that you don't know. You're very smart, Robin, okay? In fact, you could do a lot of different things in your life. You just don't know which one to pick. And the one that comes easiest is the one that's hard for you to take action in, okay? So just, I want you to be mindful of that. It's the subconscious that's tripping you up. It's nothing you've done, all right? Yes, you can, you can do the work and clear the, and get rid of the trauma. I can clear guilt, right? I got people that, are, that can do it for you. And there's some real validity to that. And it's very empowering to be able to, to have people see you for who you are, as well as clearing these things so that you can see out more clearly where you're going because right now there's so much confusion cancel cancel only love is spoken here is what i want you to say anytime you feel traumatized by something anytime you have an old memory come up and definitely anytime you feel guilty you don't have to go out of your way to connect to the divine but I would like you to begin to practice like grounding. Get out and do some earthing before it gets cold. Take your shoes off, walk on some grass, okay? Stand there, begin there. Then think about, okay, just pulling down the universal truth, universal energy down from above. And begin connecting to earth and heaven's energy, earth and universe's energy, you, earth, mother earth, and source's energy. Use the words that, that resonate with you. That's your work, love. Okay? Oh my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Okay. I'm still, I'm, we didn't start till like four or five minutes in. I'm going four or five minutes over. Okay? Okay, here we go. Stacy. Now, there's a few Stacys, so... This, Stacy, you're going to know by the question. Thank you so much. I want to know what to do with my life. I am so confused and stuck. I have been through so much that I don't even know who I am anymore. 
Ah, oh, Stacy dear, that's because you had people in your life that only cared about them. And even when you were young, you really weren't seen for who you are. Okay? Begin by not spending time anymore with people that you don't feel good with. It doesn't even matter if they remind you of somebody else. If you just don't feel like going, doing it, don't do it. Okay? You also have a hard time, though, doing things that you love to the point where you don't, you don't even know what you love to do. You don't, I, I, I understand, Okay? For many years, if somebody said, what do you enjoy doing in your spare time? I'd be like, I, I have no idea. I wasn't raised with spare time. I was raised weeding in the garden. I was raised that if the house cleaning comes first, and I had a great life. So don't. there's no bashing on my parents here. The point is, is I was taught how to work. I was not taught how to have fun. And I was not taught how to reward myself. But I've learned over the years, as I know you can right now, Stacy, is to start doing something you enjoy. If you want to go get coffee at Starbucks or some cute cafe down the street, do it. If you want to go and walk around the mall, go do it. I am not telling yourself to go on a spending free spree and spend all your money. I didn't say that, did I? Don't do something that's dishonoring. Find something little, something small that you can do and begin figuring out what you enjoy doing. I didn't even use the word play. It's too big of a word. Then look at what you're doing in your life that doesn't feel good anymore. Time to change it. I'm giving you permission to change it. You will learn who you are pretty quickly. It's there. All right? I'll tell you, you are a very good listener. You're a very good friend. I know people have hurt you before because of this. But it's a gift you have. You're good at organizing. Okay? There are things that come very natural for you. Okay? So think of this time right now as self-discovery. You can't do it wrong. It's, does it feel good? Does it not feel good? If it feels good, do it. No, no, no excuses. No, no making up stories about or calling up on stories about why it didn't work last time. Okay, that's it. If it feels like something that you want to do, I want you to do it. I didn't say get on a, get on a plane and go travel. Because that might not be something that you can really do right now. It's not about the unattainable. It's about doing something now in the present that's attainable for you. I'm sorry that your life has been um, full of this, but I promise you there is more for you. And I promise you, Stacy, that your life has a purpose. You're very creative, okay? And I'm giving you permission to begin to figure out who you are. All right, mm -hmm. sending you lots of love. Phyllis. You say, I have Lyme and debil debilitating anxiety. I don't even go out, you say. First of all, Lyme is a big deal. Okay. Phyllis, your body will heal from the Lyme. It will. Now, I want to speak to you know, to the anxiety. I suffered years with anxiety. I can't say that I've had an experience for everything. And even in my, I'm more transparent on video with everyone. 
in these situations than I ever am with my clients, okay? Because when clients work, me, work with me, it's all about me. I mean, sorry, it's nothing, it has nothing to do about with me. It's all about me helping them. <laughs> Whoa, right? So m me sharing that I suffer from anxiety for years is something I want you to hear because it crippled me. I could not public speak. I should, would shake so bad if I had to talk in public for any reason. It didn't matter. It could be I was trying to order from the menu that m my eyes would go blank. I couldn't read. I get anxiety. I get anxiety so bad that you have panic attacks and you think you're dying. You don't have to own this anymore, Phyllis. You do not have to live in anxiety. Now, yes, you could work with a healer, okay, to get rid of anxiety. But I want to give you some, some other things to do, okay? I want you to begin, okay, because first of all, what happens with this anxiety for you is you're, you're just, you're, you might have even shared this. You're just afraid. You're afraid of everything, right? I get that. But I want to tell you, it's like you are afraid of bad things happening to you. I get it because you had a tick bite you sometime, right? Like who asked for that? It says nobody, honey. And so you were a victim to something bad happening in your life. And now right now you're being traumatized by being a victim to anxiety. You are afraid of the unknown. I hear it. I know it. I understand it. I have, I have, I'm going to give you specifics. I have a great audio. Okay. It's an audio series that would really help you. It's three hours of content. Just plug them into your ears and forget about it. Okay. It works with the subconscious and it will clear these fear vibrations for you, including it'll help you with anxiety. It's called the fear into action. It's clearing fear of change. All right. It's affordable. It's something you can do. And it's something to take action and it will help you heal. But you also can hop on a quick call with me. I'll stick a link in here, like I said. And I will give you the name because it depends on your resources. This is the thing, everyone. I want to help everybody. It's going to make me emotional. One, that isn't possible, right? But I've spent years creating things. So that now, no matter where somebody is in their life, they can afford to get help. There's even free stuff on my website. Now, I get in here every week and I do brain retraining every week for free. The thing is, there are times in our life when we need to invest in something, someone. I have so much content I could never create again. I have many ways that I can help. Phyllis, okay? I mean, um, I'm not on Phyllis. I'm very, yeah, I'm Phyllis. I'm on Phyllis, sorry. Um, you can, okay, get help and you can heal and you can get rid of anxiety. So get on a call with me. I can refer you to someone who you can afford to work with, who you can work with one-on-one -on -one and get the help you need. There's actually some inherited patterns of, of anxiety that you probably managed, but you don't need to own anymore, okay? Yeah, there's lots of things going on and it will allow your body to become stronger. Anything, any healing thing on my, um, my website can help you, dearest. The point is that it will all speak in some way to the subconscious and will release some things there's just so much, think of like soul clutter going on or energy clutter that your soul can't breathe anymore. 
when we get like this, so it's hard because we want one thing to solve it all. I understand. There isn't one thing that's going to solve it, but all of it will contribute to helping you. That I know. Okay. I love you and your body will heal. Okay. It needs some support and help. All right. Oh, time. My gosh. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to keep going. Okay. You got to hop off. I'm sorry. I just want to help. Okay. Let me keep going. I am not going to be able to pronounce this correctly. Forgive me. Okay. But I will speak to it. Um, Piyush. Piyush. Okay. You say, trust in the process of life and believe in self. Mm -hmm. That's a mantra for sure, right? Low self-worth is inherited on your mother's side. And both parents have trust issues, or they did. Okay? If that, I'm sharing that so it helps you understand maybe, you know, why you are the way you are and, and what contributes to this. Okay, and yes, being untrusting, okay, comes very easy for you. Remind yourself, like I gave someone else the verbiage, okay, I am confident, I am safe, right? And it is in my divine right to trust myself and my decisions. Say that, okay? Yeah, because... If you're working on developing belief in yourself, then hear it from me that I believe in you. You have a very strong soul. Okay. And whatever happened before was to give you experience. And this new, this life, this time now is a whole new lease on life for you. And I say embrace it. Okay. Sending you love. All right. Beth, challenged with connection to higher power, source, and universe. Very literally. So even when uh, the twelve, they told me in the 12-step program that I could create my own, I was overwhelmed. Now, I feel for you. Okay, Beth, thanks for joining. Life, has, I'm going to speak to this. Life has been overwhelming for you. I'm not denying that, honey. Okay. And bad things have happened to you. And you have lived through them. Source is very aware of who you are. And you are on this, work, on this earth for a reason. Right now, you are in healing mode. That's, that's where you are right now in your timeline. Right? It might change and you might be like, okay, I want to live somewhere else now. Well, you can do that. Drive there. Right? My point is that you're healing right now. Don't be hard on yourself. But you are safe and there is more life for you, dear one. There is more for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You might even find love in this camper van life, which I love that you're living. Okay? So... Know that when you're out in nature, you are connecting to source energy. Purposely and mindfully connect to Mother Earth. Hug, you don't have to hug a tree, but lean against a tree. You can hug a tree if you want. And intentionally say, I am connecting with universal source energy. Okay? All right. Everyone, I cannot get through the next 10, okay? 
I am so sorry. I wish I could. OK, I'm going to speak to one more. All right. There's that many. OK. Laura. OK. I'm going to summarize, Laura, because you it was long, right? And that's fine. But I'm not going to read it all. And the bottom line is, Laura, you get triggered because your mother, <laughs> okay, I, I hear you here, okay? Whenever you share with her that something as good has happened in your life or somebody did something nice for you, okay, her immediate response is, did you, one of these responses, did you say thank you? I hope you told them thank you. Did you tell them thank you, right? Or did you send them a thank you note? Oh my goodness. By the time, I mean, your mother isn't young. I probably would be triggered too. I, I understand. But I also don't want you to live in this annoyed energy anymore. And I know that you've tried to change it. And I know you've explained to her during different stages of your life to stop doing this. You're very, you have been taught manners and you're excellent. And you send thank you notes, you give gratitude, you have a very grateful heart. That's not it. You don't want to be triggered anymore. Okay, here we go. First thing, I'm giving you homework. I want you to stop sharing with your mother when somebody does something nice for you. One of the reasons you're eager to share with her is because your mother also did not give you the feeling of being anything, meaning you were never enough is what she had no problem. She told you everything you were doing wrong so that you could do it better. So for you, you're trying to earn your mother's worth. Like, look, somebody did something nice to you, for you. Subconsciously, you're saying, look, mom, other people value me. Look, mom, other people really appreciate what I do. Look, mom, other people see me. Oh, I so understand. There's nothing, there's, there's no criticism here, Laura, dear. There's only understanding. All right? So, you're in a growth period right now with change, positive change. It's time to just honor you, dear Laura. Email me and tell me something that somebody did nice for you. Email me, Laura, and say, hey, I just had this amazing thing happen. Now, I'm not, you're not going to get a long response from me. But I promise you I will acknowledge you because I want to celebrate with you, okay? You share it with me, okay? Or post it in the group. Wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't that be a fun thing to do, Laura? Post it in the group and let us all celebrate you because you know what we all deserve and you deserve Laura to be acknowledged for the good things you do you work hard you've done amazing think of things for people in fact you've helped other people be successful it's now time that you allow others to acknowledge you in various ways post it in the group even you can send it to me too right the point is what Mom doesn't deserve to know that anymore. You're not punishing her. You're taking care of yourself. You're never, ever going to get her to change. And you know that anyway. Okay? I'm not telling that's not something you don't already know through experience. So I'm giving you permission. Okay? To honor who you are by doing it differently. Somebody does something nice, you're gonna post it in the group, we all wanna know about it, or email me. I love you, Laura, and other people love you. I value you and other people value you. Now value yourself and stop doing this because it's not working for you, okay? Oh, there's so many. I am. Oh my gosh, guys, we could do two hours. Seriously. Oh. All right, you're welcome. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. Okay. 
Yeah, that's not something I can memorize, right? The, the questions from you. Everyone, I loved the process of this. I felt so purposeful being able to give back in some way to help you have more clarity about who you are in your life, right? I thank you for sending them in. And um, if I had known that there would be so many, I would have said it'll be a special two hour session or something, right? I'll do it again, okay? I'll do it again. And um, I really want to encourage you to reach out to me because if it's not me, there's other people that do exactly what I do and that can help you and I'll, I'll guide you to them. And I have other ways that I can help you and I can give you tools and tips like I can continue doing that. And I will continue doing that because <clears throat> we are not meant right now to suffer. And if you're suffering, it's because you're not acknowledging what isn't working for you. So my last, my last thing is please take enough time in your day to acknowledge a feeling that doesn't feel good and say to yourself, what isn't working in my life right now? Because I promise you, what used to work for you isn't necessarily going to work in the future. And there's a reason you don't feel great. There's a reason you get triggered. And it's not your fault unless you choose to not do anything about it. Okay? Mm. I'll come back in and acknowledge you, okay? I will. Love you. Sending you lots of love. Thank you for being in my world. Thank you for being in the tribe. And thank you con for contributing. All right, everyone. See you next week. I will, I'll do, am I doing something next week? I think I am. All right? Okay, bye. Well, I'll do a visualization for sure. Okay.